identify the prime and composite numbers on a hundreds chart. The prime and composite numbers on a hundreds chart. And if I go too fast, uh, I will record this and put it up on the tube of you. Now, step A, we already have done. Does everybody have their hundreds chart? Good. Good, good, good. Step B says, cross out one. One is neither prime nor composite. Why is the number one neither prime nor composite? Ian? Because it's only one. You it, can't do one times one. Good. Yes. It only has one factor. The number one only has one factor, and that's just one. A prime number has to have exactly two. A composite number has to have more than two. That's why the number one is neither prime nor composite. I might like right off to the side somewhere. One is not prime or composite. Because when you use this later in the year and you look at your prime number chart, you want to be able to say, why is one crossed off and not what the other things is? So I write on my hundreds chart, one is not prime or composite. Man, we're already on C. Step C says circle the number two. The number two is our first prime number. Now, crazy enough, the number two is the only prime number that is even. The number two is the only prime number that is even. Because every other, every other prime number has two as a factor. Or every other even number has two as a factor. So an even number, 66. Well, 33 times two is 66. So that has more than two factors. 46, 23 times two. So that has more than two factors. Every even number is divisible by two. Two times something equals every even number. Two is a factor of every even number. So our next step says, color all the numbers that are a multiple of two. If we remember our divisibility rules that we glued in our journal, our divisibility rules really help us when we're doing this. A number is divisible by 2 if the last digit is even, which means if the last digit is a 0, a 2, a 4, a 6, or an 8. So everything that has a 0, 2, 4, 6, or an 8 in the ones place is a composite number. So everything that has a 2 in the ones place other than 2, I want to color those in. Everything that has a 4 in the ones place, because 2 times 2 is 4, 1 times 4 is 4, so 4 can't be prime, because it has three, 3 factors. So all even numbers are the only even number that is prime is 2. The only even number that is prime is the number two. Now I love the divisibility rules and we'll use the divisibility rules a lot as we're trying to find factors of numbers. We'll use the divisibility rules a lot as we're looking at fractions and we want to simplify fractions. And the next prime number, which is three, has one of the coolest divisibility rules 
or the divisibility rule, one of them that I like to use the most. So I could give an assignment and say, tell me which of these numbers is divisible by three. And even if I made the number 37,200 and... All right. I can tell you very quickly whether this number is divisible by 3. So I wrote down the number 37,216. And without doing the division, I can tell you if that number is divisible by 3. If you looked at your divisibility rules, it says the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So what does that mean? Well, what's 3 plus 7? 10 plus 2? 12 plus 1? Plus 6? 19. Does 3 go into 19 evenly? No. It doesn't go in evenly. What if we did 27,225? Okay, is 27,225 divisible by 3? No. What are the sum of the digits? 18. 18? Yes. We agree? Yes. Yes? yes. No. 2 plus 7? 8. 8. 9. 9. Plus 2? Plus 2? Plus 5? 18. 18. Is 18 divisible by 3? Yes. No. What? 18 is divisible by 3. Now, okay, I'm not 100% sure 18 is divisible by 3. You know what I can do? I can find the sum of the digits in 18. What's the sum of the digits in 18? 9. Is 9 divisible by 3? Yes. I know right now. Without doing any real difficult math, I know 27,225 is divisible by 3, as long as we did our adding and stuff correctly. Okay, I love the divisibility rule for 3. 2 and 3, knowing 2 and 3 is going to make your life really much easier. Because if you know 2 and 3, you also know the divisibility rule for 6. We're not going to do this year a 7 or an 8. The divisibility rule for 9 is really similar to the divisibility rule for 3. Divisibility rule for 5 is easy. It ends in a 5 or a 0. And the divisibility rule for 10 is it ends in a 0. Okay, so now let's go back here where we're at. 3 is my next prime number. I have 3 circled. Now I have to cross off every multiple of 3. Every one of these numbers here that is divisible by 3. Some of them are already gone. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, let's see, 27, 28, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48, 51. 51 is going to get you. If you don't go back and look at your prime number chart, and I give you a question that says, hey, is 51 primer composite? If you don't look at your chart 99 times out of 100, I'm going to get you to say prime. kind of looks prime. But it ain't. 51, 54, 57 is crossed off. 60 is crossed off. 63, 69 needs to be crossed off. 72, 75 needs to be crossed off. 81, well, I'm, I'm going to leave it up there. 81, 84, 87 needs to be crossed off. 90 is, 91, 92. 93 needs to be crossed off. 96 and 99 need to be crossed off. 
Now I've crossed off up here all the numbers that either have two as a factor or three as a factor. Some of them have both two and three as a factor. So your chart is going to look something like this. And if I get going too fast, one, I'm recording it, so you'll be able to look back at it. Two, I'm not going to erase it. So just take a deep breath. Listen as I speak. Don't worry if you get behind. Just listen to a lot of the words coming out of my mouth. Our next prime number is five. We already discussed five. The only factors of 5 are 1 and 5, which makes it prime. Now, any number that 5 will divide evenly into has 5 as a factor. So, you're looking at my divisibility rule for 5. If it ends in a 0 or a 5, it's divisible by 5. So, 5 is a factor of it. We need to get rid of them. We've already got rid of all the zeros, so everything below 5 So after we've identified 5 as our next prime number, it should look like this. And if you're behind, chill, because I've got a way to ca catch you up, as long as you're listening to how I'm explaining it. Our next prime number is 7. Because if you made an array for 7, the only way you can do it is 1 times 7. So you'd have a rectangle, which is a side of 1 and a side of 7. Exactly two factors, which makes it prime. Now, every multiple of 7 has 7 as a factor. So 7 times 2 is 14. So 14 has 7 as a factor. So it's composite. It's already crossed off. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 is a composite number because I can multiply 7 times 3 and 1 times 21. 7 times 4? 28. It's a composite, so it's crossed off. 7 times 5? 7 times 6, 7 times 7, 49. Look, 7 times 7, so 49 is a square number, and it's also a composite number. It is a square number and a composite number. All right, so that was 7 times 7. What's 7 times 8? I already crossed off. 7 times 9? 63. Good. And 7 times 10? 70. Already crossed off. 70. 7 times 11. 77 needs to be crossed off. It's right after 76 and right before 78. It's below 67 and above 87. Okay. All right, so we did 70, 7 times 12 is 84. Already crossed off. 7 times 13 is... 91. 91 needs to be crossed off. That's another one. That's another one that if you don't take a second and think about it, if I gave it to you and said, hey, is 91 prime or composite? If you don't take a second to think about it, or you don't look at your hundreds chart that you're going to glue in your journal, you're going to think that it's, compo or that it's prime because it kind of sounds prime. It sounds prime. 11 is our, is our next prime number. Because the only way I can make that is 1 times 11. Now this is easy because I cross off all my multiples of 11. And you can count my 11s. So 22, crossed off. 33, crossed off. 44, 55, 66, 77 needs to be crossed off. Oh, already crossed off. 88. 99. All right. So, once I've gotten this far, and I'm looking at a hundreds chart, 
everything that is not crossed off is now prime. Now, if I was going higher than 100, I'm going to have to keep following this process. My friends Tim and Moby were telling me about there's a contest with lots of money that to find the biggest prime number and then but they're using like hundreds of computers together all tied together to find out the biggest prime number and it's always ongoing so we have 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 29 31 37 41 43 47 53 59 61 67 71 73 79 83 89 and 97 so how many prime numbers are there between 0 and 100? Why are you looking at the sky? It's not right up there. You should have them circled on your paper. I don't have them circled because I was missing chalky. I have them all circled. So how many are there? Quietly. There are 25 numbers on a hundreds chart that are prime. 25, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 97. 83, 89, and 97. I've been teaching this so long, I pretty much have them memorized. It's my 30th year. Well, see, the thing about teaching is you don't have to stay at the same school the whole time. So I taught at different places before this school opened. Quick question. This is what you need to know in this grade level. You need to be able to find the prime numbers on a hundreds chart. There are 25 of them. You also need to be able to find factors of a number. So if I gave you the number 51 and said, what are the factors of 51? You would go 1 and 51, 3 and 17. How would you know 3? Because 5 plus 1 is 6, and 6 is a multiple of 3. So you need to know how to find prime and composite numbers. You need to be able to find factors of a given number. You need to be able to identify numbers that are square numbers. Are there any questions on how this is done? If you're not here today, it will be posted and you can look at where on the tube of you. How do you know if you're not here today? Well, I hear your voice, so I know you're here. Well, when I ask you to do this and glue it into your journal, and you say, I don't know what you're talking about, then you'll watch the video. This needs to be glued in your journal. Thank you, Cher. 